What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this Tuesday, March 14th, 2023. It's about 11.38 a.m. out here in California, where it is soggy. Goodness, we picked up uh, almost two inches of rainfall overnight. A lot of flooding happening around me here in Northern California once again. We'll get to that here in just a little bit. Uh, latest earthquake shows a 3.3 and uh, some movement out here in the Mediterranean with a little bit of uptick, including a 5.4 uh, near the Crete area earlier. Uh, let's go ahead and check out what's going on out here across the map today. Got uh, California rocking and rolling. I am leaving up the earthquake watch here uh, throughout the day due to seismic increasing inland. And also today, an uptick along the plate boundary itself. Um, a lot of times when we see this movement inland, such as what's going on here across these oil fields, Yellowstone National Park, a lot of the regional Intermountain West regions, that tells us that there's increasing activity and pressure built up uh, along the plate boundary itself. And a lot of times that pressure will transfer uh, inland. And today uh, we got a pretty good swarm of activity on the San Andreas Fault here. Uh, and it looks like threes are the magic number. Now these are not mistakes here. These are all individual earthquakes that are ramping up here. Uh, on the San Andreas Fault, it looks like it is on the creeping section. Uh, as you know, California has been recently fairly quiet. I keep mentioning that in my updates. Uh, but it all kind of kicked off here yesterday with a swarm of movement here across Death Valley area uh, and around this uh, specific fault. Can't really find too much info on the Fish Lake Valley Fault Zone, although there has been some activity here uh, back in the 60s. Uh, some moderate earthquake activity. Uh, so yeah, definitely things building up here across the West Coast. Uh, getting back to this activity real quick. Three 3.4s and two, two point, uh, upper twos it looks like uh, in the last hour. Now that's a, a pretty good amount of earthquake activity for a short amount of time. So we'll continue to watch the West Coast here. Most of the activity appears to be uh, within this zone southward and inland. Uh, so we'll continue to watch areas of San Andreas Fault here south and um, the west coast in general. Uh, looking at this activity here across the region. Now Death Valley kind of sits, um, where are we, a little bit further south here um, across the region. But this movement, uh, let's see what we got here for largest magnitude so far. Looks like a 3.9. That one coming in just after midnight, uh, about 3 o'clock in the morning. So things have been rapidly progressing, it looks like, far as the magnitude goes. Uh, a couple other threes in there as well. And this movement is kind of migrating out, if you see here across the area. Um, Long Valley Super Volcano sits up here. It's not, not a whole lot going on there across that region right now. Um, this earthquake activity the depth of these earthquakes here very uh well they're not consistent whatsoever they're all over the place uh, from roughly surface quakes down to about 14 kilometers deep so um definitely a quite a bit of strain within the california shear zone this is close to the walker lane area uh, where we do see quite a bit of tectonic stress um migration here from the plate boundary itself so we'll continue to watch this and see how it plays out but uh, definitely looking like something's brewing here uh, specifically out here along the west coast with this inland activity stirring up uh, also did see some movement yesterday as well 3.1 near the big bear lake uh, that is on the north american side of the plate boundary eight kilometers deep so overall picture here across the region seismically elevated um, so we'll keep an eye for sure on the West Coast today. Um, areas north, not a whole lot going on throughout Northern California or the Pacific Northwest. A um, couple small microquakes it looks like. Yellowstone National Park, of course, has been kicking off a little bit of swarming. Uh, reg registering uh, 68 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. I was just checking out the Yellowstone overview here. Make sure this is the most recent. It looks like it is. And the swarm was uh, fairly consistent for a few hours last night and yesterday. But looking at the graphs here today, this morning, this afternoon, looks like things are mellowing out slightly. 
um, notice not as many earthquakes as what we've seen, uh, for example, this time yesterday in the, the uh, afternoon period. So uh, swarms come and go at Yellowstone. That was pretty intense for a little while. Picked up probably a good 100 earthquakes or so within that little time frame at Yellowstone. The USGS reported uh, close to it, close to 100 quakes. Um, let me see here. I have to go back to the last week. Most of the activity occurred yesterday, so we're not going to see uh, too much activity. But it looks like they recorded 136 earthquakes here on the map from today and yesterday. So pretty significant number. Uh, but again, it looks like things may be mellowing out there at Yellowstone for now. Uh, across areas of Texas, most of this from yesterday. We did pick up a couple other twos out there into... Well, you guys know what's out there. I think you do. No, those are not alien bases, not underground tunnels. Those are wastewater disposal wells with uh, each one consisting of a little pond. And they, well, they got to do something with the waste, right? So they inject it way below. And uh, at the same time, we get these earthquakes popping up here, out here. Uh, sometimes it takes uh, weeks, if not months, uh, for earthquake activity to um, take place following the operations here across these uh, wastewater disposal wells. All right, uh, looking out across the rest of the area, seeing if we got any major shift in the pressure right now. Uh, let me look on the Earthquake 3D globe and see what we have. West Coast definitely ramping up. Look at all that swarming kicking up here. That's quite a bit of earthquake activity. Um, not a whole lot. The Western Pacific plate here is relatively quiet, including areas around the Indonesia area. Yes, we do have some earthquake activity. And some from yesterday, we had that uh, 6.3 kicking up there in the afternoon time period. Kind of looks like that disappeared off the map. Stand by for a second here. While I bring that back up, a lot of times these, uh, for whatever reason, the Earthquake 3D globe will lower itself automatically as far as the m amount of earthquakes here on the globe. But that's about right. Either way, still shows most of the movement here kicking off across the West Coast, adjacent plates here across the Cocos Plate, Middle America Trench. South America really hasn't seen too much activity. Looks like we did pick up a 5.2 and uh, a 5.1 from yesterday, but nothing today. Notice that lacking activity here across South America. Uh, so I think right now the main focus is definitely on the west coast out here in california uh, so again still got to be on watch out here be on guard uh, for some further movement possibly taking place here today real soon uh, a little bit of activity across new zealand recently this morning a 3.2 and a 3.5 up north into the kermadec trench uh, let me see what we have down here nothing on the usgs map of course so we're going to go to the geonet servers and just double check stuff I may go out here in a little bit, see if I can get some flooding photos because quite a bit of roads around me are flooded again and, and closed. Uh, two inches of rain overnight, that's a lot on top of already soaked ground. Um, let's see, 2.8 North Island, that's 141 kilometers deep there, Hikurangi. Yeah, it's still coming down out there. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not. There's that 3.5 three hours ago, looks like along the Kermadec Trench. So slight uptick. Um, you know, all these little small quakes is very similar to what you would see along any major plate boundary. So I don't see any major specific uptick in swarming out here uh, across the New Zealand area. Uh, you know, aside from some of those smaller quakes there, which is very typical across the uh, major plate boundary that New Zealand sits on. All right, let's see, move on here. Um, skipping this area because there's not a whole lot of movement across the Java Trench for now. Like you say, it looks like we've come to a halt right about here, right about the uh, Java Trench region. So with that in mind, you know, that teeter-totter effect does tend to stretch back here across the Eastern Pacific. We build up momentum and pressure and earthquakes, obviously. And I think that's going to be our hot spot unless we see some major large-scale deep uh, adjustment across the Western Pacific here. We need to keep an eye on the Eastern Pacific where California sits in the West Coast. Uh, there's that 5.4 kicking off earlier this morning. Let's see exactly where that's at. The Central Mediterranean Sea region, 10 kilometers deep, um, moderate-sized quake. 
uh, for that area. Also, Turkey shown some fours in there as well. Atlantic Ocean, relatively quiet. Not a whole lot popping off. We did have a little bit of activity here on the uh, Pacific Antarctica Ridge down here along a fracture zone. Not for sure which one that is. Uh, there's a couple different fracture zones. There's a lot of them, actually. Uh, but this is a uh, close to a divergent boundary, a separation of the seafloor, so to speak, in terms of the plate movement down there. The big island of Hawaii got uh, 13 earthquakes listed up here on the map. Most of it looks like it is around the Pahala area. Just want to make sure the bells are off. Yes, they are. Goodness. And that's not too, uh, not too active down there on the big island. Check out these volcanoes here across the Aleutian Trench. A little bit of activity this morning. Nothing major. Doesn't look like it. And the most recent hazard notification system on the uh, volcanoes. Looks like it was put out yesterday there from the uh, Takawanga and the Tanaga Volcano. Um, yeah, see they're mentioning even the reduced rate of earthquake activity there across those two volcanoes. Uh, nothing yet far as eruptions go. Of course, that could, you know, always change. Sometimes these volcanoes will have months of earthquake swarms and built up uh, pressure, so to speak, before any eruption. And then sometimes <clears throat> they'll just have an earthquake swarm and that'd be it. No eruption whatsoever. So continue to watch that and monitor that uh, for the, uh, for those two volcanoes there along the Aleutian Trench. <clears throat> Space weather activity, it looks like, man, we're kicking up here with proton events once again. Uh, notice the polar regions here picking up the charged particles, and uh, really, <clears throat> it looks like that's confined to that region there, north and south polar regions uh, from some type of event. I believe it was from yesterday's massive CME that kicked off. It was not Earth-directed, uh, but it was powerful enough to send a lot of uh, protons to the uh, Earth area and that's kind of what we're seeing here even today uh, i believe these are updated let's see when this was updated here uh it says this page updates every minute 314 1848 so pretty close to right about now if i if i uh, am correct on the utc time yep only by two minutes right there so definitely still very active up there on the um polar regions no major flares have been produced no major cmes at least earth directed uh, looking at um, the sunspots that are currently facing the earth the magnetic structure here different colors indicating uh, the polarities and the structure in that sunspot doesn't look like there's much happening out amongst any of these sunspots so we'll wait uh, here in the coming days to see if we can get a maybe a better view of something going on here on the eastern limb of the sun, but for now, relatively calm conditions. Only a 50% chance for a C flare. M flare at 5% chance, X flare less than 1%. And again, proton events are kicking up at the polar regions like crazy right now. And uh, most of the time, that's radio blackouts up there, GPS navigation systems that could be uh, affected from those uh, uh, protons up there into the ionosphere. All right, uh, weather activity, goodness. We, uh, we got a whopper of a storm coming in here to the west coast. And I think I think we got a lot more rain here in Northern California than what they were predicting. Uh, my forecast last night before I went to bed showed about an inch and three tenths for a forecast. Well, we picked up almost two inches of rain here uh, just outside of Chico. And that's a lot. A little bit more than what they were forecasting. We haven't got the wind yet. They were expecting uh, winds up to 60 miles an hour. So I'm guessing... That's going to increase um, as this low pressure system moves into Northern California. Notice the tight uh, lines here indicating pressure differences that will bring about wind, obviously. So we'll watch for that later tonight. And with two inches of rain, the ground soaked and soggy. Uh, we could be looking at power outages here with trees falling. And uh, that, of course, affecting my stream here. Uh, so if it does go down, we'll try to get it back up as soon as possible. But yeah, we got a lot of precipitation here um, in Northern Cal and a lot more than what they were saying. Uh, looking out into the forecast here, looks like things are going to stay wet 
across the California area. Um, maybe towards the end of March, it looks like maybe a little break with high pressure in here, a little bit of warmer conditions, but either way, man, goodness, it's been quite the winter, let me tell you. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Uh, again, stay safe out there. The earthquake um, watch will remain in effect here for the West Coast due to the uptick in earthquake activity inland, North American Plate, and also along the plate boundary itself here on the San Andreas Fault. So just be prepared to stay safe. We do have all the seismograph stations back up and running, it looks like. Um, closest one down into Southern Cal is going to be a station called Barrett. Let's see what happened to it. Do 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 Turkey. Oh, there it is. Okay. So Barrett's going to be right here. Southern California. Notice a little bit of activity kicking up here. This is around San Diego uh, area, and there's some signatures of earthquakes on there. But uh, definitely stay safe out here today, folks. I just have a have an odd feeling. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on tonight.